Statistically speaking, Soul Bad Guy is the coolest protagonist in fighting games. I mean, who else is named after the lead singer of Queen? Also according to this magic statistic, you have also thought about playing Soul at one point. If this is the case, you are in the right place. In this video, I'll explain Soul in a way that'll help you get started. Basically so you can just pick up this character and go. Important note that this guide is not the definitive article, and after watching this I encourage you to go learn more about this wonderful game. If you are coming from Strive, welcome and stay tuned. Soul is a well-rounded character that does best at the close range. His game plan encourages you to condition the opponent to get what you want. To complement this playstyle, Soul has some of the higher damaging combos in the game with great opportunities to use meter to further enhance his close ranged offense. To keep this guide efficient, I won't go over every move in full depth as that won't help you. Instead, I'll go over moves that I think are important for you to get started. For more in-depth information about these normals, please go to the dust loop wiki in the description below. So you're probably going to ask why I'm mentioning this move. In Strive, this move kind of sucks. Yeah, it's 4 frames fast, but it doesn't really get you anything. In Exert, much like most of the cast, 5P gives you full combos. Soul's 5P Gatlings into every one of his normals, but most importantly, it gives you Close Slash, which gives you basically every combo you can think of. Use this to establish a very quick offense or interrupt your opponent's pressure and take your turn back. Much like in Strive, 5K is a fast, close range move that acts as a great anti air. It is 5 frames fast rather than Strive's 3 frames fast, meaning that this won't be your go to close range button anymore. If you do use this move, try to use it as an anti air. Otherwise, you'll use it for its 2 hit property to hit confirm 5K into close slash for the combo. I'll go over combos later in this video. Close slash is your standard but all purpose move. It is blindingly fast at 5 frames, which makes it just as fast as 5k. It is mostly used to establish pressure, thanks to its good gatling options. You mostly use close slash as a hit confirm. If the opponent blocks close slash, go into far slash and then 2s for reasons that I'll get into in a moment. If the opponent gets hit, you can go into far slash into 2d for a meterless combo, or go for 5h for an rc combo. I'll expand this later in the video. Speaking of far slash, this move is mostly used as a poke. It is quick at 7 frames and can be good at establishing your offense. Be careful though as the move is quite slow to recover on whiff. Five H is similar to far slash as it is a long range poke. However, it has less gatling options as well as it being slower at 11 frames but you'll mostly use this in your hit confirm as well as frame trapping with 6p. 5d is standard. Much like strive, this is a universal overhead that leads to combos on hit. Not extremely useful, but do know that all dusts are a little bit faster than in strive. Use this move only on the occasion as this move is quite unsafe on block. 6p is soul's funny move. It is a universal anti-air, much like the rest of the cast, being upper body invincible when the move is inputted. Landing this in the corner causes a wall bounce even in combos. On counter hit, it pushes the opponent even further back which causes a wall bounce at further range. Unlike Strive, Soul 6 p will gatling into basically anything you can think of. This opens the door to many pressure strings as well as new combos that you weren't capable of doing before. 6H is Soul's biggest normal, and it's quite different from Strive's. First off, the move is slow, almost double the startup of Strive's 6H at 17 frames. On top of this, it is also unsafe on block. Where the move is more useful is the fact that it is special cancelable. When done in conjunction with a Roman cancel, this move is quite useful as it cranks up the risk gauge as well as frame traps the opponent for a huge counter hit. By the way, God have mercy on the soul of the person who gets hit by this move on counter hit. Two K is used for a low option. This tends to low profile some moves without big risk. 
It also gatlings into basically everything. 2S is important as it is plus 3 on block. This allows you to reset your offense which is very helpful for Sol as his mix-up gain is quite limited without setups. Basically, use this for block strings. 2H is not very useful outside of being a combo filler. It can be used as an anti-air but Volcanic Viper, 5K, and 6P all do a better job. Otherwise, it gives combos on counter hit. 2D is the unga bunga move that even soul players cannot deny that it's super cheap. 2D is a sweep that is quite fast at 7 frames and is special cancelable. The real power of this move is in the fact that Soul gets down like he's in a 1990s music video. It gets down so low that it often causes even the most massive of hitboxes to whiff against it. Use this at the end of a hit confirm and as a way to avoid moves for Okazemi or a massive counter hit combo. Jump P is an oddly absurd move. It's best used as an air to air, but when you do the move, Soul's hurt box shrinks smaller than my subscriber account. Ooh, self burn! Those are rare. Jump K is used for air to airs as well, but it has longer range. Gatling this into Jump S for a combo pickup in the air. Jump Heavy Slash is whack. It's good for an air to air as well as an air to ground attack. It has long active frames which make it good for approaching the opponent as well. Where the shenanigans kick in is in the fact that this move has zero recovery. Quite literally. On whiff or on hit it doesn't matter. Once the move is done, it recovers instantly. This allows for some burst safe points in combos. Ah, uh, Jump Dust. The move that spawned an entire wiki. Jump Dust on its own is quite mediocre, but that is not why we use it. This move is used for the famous Dust Loop combo. I'll go over what that means in the combo section, but be aware that that is what this move is used for. Otherwise, Jump Dust is generally used after landing Jumping Slash. Gunflame is the reason people hate fighting this character. This move is very important to his neutral as well as his offense. It is essentially a Terry Power Wave on crack. Gunflame is a slow moving wall of fire that if landed, it launches the opponent. On counter hit, this move is unteckable, granting him practically any combo he wants. But be careful, this move has a ton of recovery in which if you get hit during, you'll be counter hit. One important note is Gunflame YRC. Unlike Plus R's Gunflame FRC, this one is easy to do and is just as effective. If you Roman cancel Gunflame early, it will pretty much only be a YRC. And if you remember from the intro guide, YRC costs 25% meter. Once you YRC the Gunflame, the opponent must react. If they block, you're plus a million. If they get hit by the gun flame, they die. If they jump, you anti-air them. Essentially, this is 90% of Soul's mix-up game. It's best used in the corners so that it eliminates the opponent's ability to both backdash and jump back. To add on to this, Gunflame Faint, or as I like to call it, Gun Faint, is a move that exists. You'll mostly use it after 5H or 6H as a mind game. It recovers much faster than a regular Gunflame, so if the opponent thinks they'll react to the Gunflame by jumping at you, you'll be ready to react with whatever you want. Intensive. Hmm. I'll bet they won't have. <sighs> wow, they have it! Canned! Volcanic Viper! Volcanic Viper is basically the same as Strive's version. Both can be used in the air, it can act as a good anti air. The Slash version is slower in Exer but more invincible, while the Heavy Slash version is faster but more unsafe on block. One thing completely absent in Strive is the knockdown follow up. Inputted with a quarter circle back K, it makes every DP a hard knockdown. Be careful as this can whiff in certain situations and this makes DP much more unsafe than it already is. Bandit Revolver is about the same as it is in Strive, but it doesn't require an extra K input. 
I recommend using this as your primary combo ender. Bandit Bringer is inputted by holding the K in the Bandit Revolver input. It's a jumping attack that acts as an overhead, but its main use is as combo filler. It also can avoid certain attacks including fireballs by jumping over it. It's not generally a good idea to throw out raw due to its literal half second startup, making anti-airing it and air throwing it super easy. Otherwise on hit it gives a floor bounce for a combo and on counter hit the floor bounce is higher. Riot Stamp is... well, it's silly. It's essentially a huge backswing blow that puts him in the air. If Soul gets to the opponent, he does the attack. The attack is an overhead that starts combos, and while that sounds good, it isn't. The move speed is determined by how close to the wall or the edge of the screen Soul is. The further it is, the slower it is. Not to mention that if he's hit at any point during the move, which is easier than spelling your own name, it's a counter hit. However, if your back is against the wall, the move is real quick. This makes for a nice sneaky overhead to get yourself out of corner pressure. Break is a move that you've never seen before unless you've played this game. Basically, it's a dive kick. The move acts as a sort of combo filler as well as an alternate movement option to get in on your opponent. To complement this, Break is plus 2 on block, but only if the second hit of it lands. Robin cancel it for some funny shenanigans. Wild Throw acts like its Strive counterpart except one minor detail. It starts combos. This is the primary throw you want to use as his regular throws are, well, kinda bad. Use this in conjunction with his lows and frame traps to remind your opponent to stop blocking. By the way, don't whiff this. Ground Viper is the most coin flip move Soul has. His hurtbox goes about as low as 2Ds, avoiding so many attacks. It is also a low for the first set of hits. If you mash the directional and attack inputs, you'll go further and have more hits. The use of this move is mostly to low profile attacks or to take your opponent to the corner by comboing into it. Be aware that this move is minus 56 on block, aka they have about a full second to punish you for it. Fafnir is relatively like Strive's counterpart. It is a plus 2 on block mid that cannot be cancelled into. Exert is faster on startup and is mostly used as combo filler or as a whiff punisher. This move also cranks up the risk gauge, so blocking this too many times is not recommended. Tyrant Rave is, well, the same. It's just faster and less punishable on block. Use this at the end of combos for a little bonus damage. Unfortunately, unlike the startup screen, it doesn't blow out your speakers. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for! Radar! You know everything you just learned? Throw that shit out the window if you Dragon Install. Dragon Install makes you move faster, makes most of your moves faster, as well as making them plus on block. It also changes the properties of all of your special moves. He gets one new move with a DP plus K in the air. This is an air-only command grab, which you can use to grab your opponents out of burst for mental damage. Dragon Install costs 50% meter and has a time limit in which at the end he is stunned for a second, so be aware. A quick note that the time limit increases when Soul is in Hellfire mode. <laughs> and now for something completely different. Firstly, learn to dash break. You do this by FDing while running. This will allow you to run and stop to block instantly, which is good for Soul who works best up close to his opponent. Use 5P as a quick way to stop your opponent's poking. Use Far Slash as your primary long range poke and as a whiff punisher. Far Slash should almost always be gatlinged into something, as the frames of Far Slash on block are kind of bad. On hit, you can do 5H, which allows you to do an RC combo, but can tend to whiff if you're too far from the opponent. If you're close enough, 2S will combo into 5H. Speaking of which, the string you'll be doing most often is Far Slash into 2S on block. Because if 2S is blocked, you are now plus. 
If far slash lands into a swift, you're still free to act either with a dash break for distance, far slash again to beat attacks or movement, and 5H as a high reward counter hit option. To further add on to the conditioning, you can go from far slash or 5H into gunflame. This will get them to start blocking and or jumping. In addition, you can go into bandit revolver which encourages attacks to try to beat it. Use 2P, 5P, 2K, or even close slash for a quick way to enter your close range pressure. Use this in tandem with his other moves as described and just go crazy. The thing to note is that up to this point I've been using numpad notation as this is the standard notation for Guilty Gear. If you're confused about it, let me explain it real quick. Please take a look at your number pad on the right of your keyboard. The numbers are representative of the direction they are on the pad. So if I say 5D, 5 is a neutral input, meaning no direction. 5 in the middle of the number pad represents this. If I say 6H, 6 is in the right position, which is forward on the movement stick. Please note that the directions flip when faced in the opposite direction. But you might run into that in other resources. An example of this is Gunflame. In numpad notation, it's 236P, or quarter circle forward P, as 2 is down, 3 is down forward, and 6 is forward. This applies to any move, so just be aware that it exists. In my notation for the following combos, if you see these brackets, this means that you can add in this hit for either a faster move or as an optional hit. As a reminder, these combos are not the definitive article. They are simply here to help you get started. As such, I encourage you to do more research and come up with whatever works best for you. Quick note about this combo. This is the infamous dust loop combo that you'll be using for 90% of Soul's corner combos. The tricks to do this combo are the following. First off, you'll want to delay the Gatling from 6P to 5H depending on the character's weight. The heavier the character, the longer the delay. This applies for both instances in the combo. Secondly, the first jump dust is hit while rising and the second is hit while falling. If done correctly, the second one will hit close to the ground. Work your timings as the jump dust will sometimes not come out. If it doesn't, your first jump dust might not have come out fast enough. Lastly, the Fafnir will need to be delayed as much as possible after landing the second jump dust to ensure that it connects. Last note here, you use Gun Faint after 6H for more frames of advantage after the hit. This is very useful for setting up the Gun Flame YRC that we went over earlier. Oh, 
know that not all of these combos will work on every character as size as well as weight heavily influences how the combo goes. I encourage you to mess around with these combos to fit what works best for each character. And that's the end. If you want to see something about Soul in more depth, let me know in the comments section. Otherwise, I'll move on to the next character. As such, let me know if you want shorter, more simple guides or if this was a good length. As I've mentioned, I haven't made guides and videos before. Other than that, well, see ya.